Police neutralized a notorious Abuja kidnapper in the fight against insecurity. Nigerians groan as House of Representatives interrogates top government officials on the state of the economy. New Nigerian workers and pensioners protest non-payment of entitlement. And on the foreign scene, Hamas responds positively to ceasefire plan amidst growing humanitarian crisis. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. My name is Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. Now the news in detail. Police force attached with the Department of Force Intelligence tactical teams have gone down a notorious kidnapper terrorizing the outskirts of the federal capital territory of Abuja. The notorious bandit Isa Dede was neutralized during a gun duel with security personnel who had combed the hideout of some kidnapping syndicates making lives unbearable for residents of the suburbs in Abuja. The spokesperson of the Nigerian police, Olumuiwa Dejobi, who reviewed this Wednesday morning, disclosed that some members of the syndicate fled when they cited the police operatives. Adijabi called on the public, particularly medical practitioners, to call the attention of police operators when treating patients with gunshot wounds for further investigation. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is back in the country after spending 13 days in France on a private visit. The presidential jet 001 conveying the president touched down at the presidential wing of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport at about 8.50 p.m. on Tuesday night. And his stay away from almost two weeks had drawn harsh criticisms from political and social observers. The president comes back to a country gripped by a cost of high living crisis and compounded by the depreciation of the value of the currency to 1,400 naira to the dollar. The harsh economic environment has also resulted in mass protests in Kano and Niger states, which may be on Onina's sign of things to come. Now, the Minister of Finance, Wale Edung, and the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Atiku Bagudu, have reassured Nigerians that measures are in place to tackle the high cost of living. The Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Olaya Mikodoso, and Chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Zak Adidiji, have also joined the effort to alleviate concerns about current inflation. The report. Rising cost of living has been a major concern for most Nigerian households, impacting their financial well-being. The surge in living costs is linked to several factors, including rising housing prices, agricultural produce, escalating education and healthcare expenses, and income inequalities. During the sectoral debate at the Green Chamber of the National Assembly, President Tinubu's economic team highlighted that the current state of the country is a consequence of cumulative economic policies over the years, leading to increased living expenses due to inflation. Minister of Finance emphasized that, with improvements, various sectors will stimulate economic growth. So when you attack food production, raise food production, you bring down uh, the price of food, you bring down inflation, you get a chance to bring down interest rates, and there lies the road to investment. Minister of Budget and National Planning, Atiku Bagudu, addressing the state of economy, affirmed that ongoing economic challenges have been thoroughly assessed and a strategic plan is in place to effectively resolve them. We reckon with global challenges that are impacting us domestically and we reckon with the uh, transitional nature of some of the measures that we have been we have taken and we know that they will have some impact during his remarks the apis bank boss yemi kadoso emphasized that despite ongoing efforts the high cost of living remains a significant concern 
He highlighted the Central Bank of Nigeria's commitment to implementing lasting solutions and reducing inflation to 21.4% through enhanced agriculture productivity. Kadoso also noted that market transactions exceeded $800 million and to mitigate exchange rate volatility, the CBN plans to enhance liquidity. Inflation pressures may persist, albeit temporarily, but are expected to moderate significantly by the first, fourth quarter of 2024. Exchange rate pressures are also expected to reduce with a smooth functioning of foreign exchange markets. Zach Adedeji, the executive chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, assured the public that the federal government does not intend to raise taxes. Instead, they aim to strategize in ways that would generate positive and more effective results. That what we need to do is to re-strategize within to make sure that uh, we bring more people into tax net. So without increasing the tax rate, that will be able to meet the targets. Deputy Speaker Benjamin Kalu stressed the importance of acknowledging the urgency and significance of the agenda at hand. He emphasized the need to address the stark realities of the economic, fiscal and the revenue challenges confronting the country. The reform we envisage should not only address the immediate needs, but also lay a you know, foundation that is resilient with a dynamic framework that can adapt to future challenges and opportunities. By implementing the strategies outlined by the ministers, there's an expectation that the action plans will alleviate the negative impact of the high cost of living on individuals and families. And still in the National Assembly, the House of Representatives have expressed deep concern over the rising cost of living, urging immediate action from the federal government to all stakeholders in the country. And this call comes in response to a motion of urgent national importance by Honorable Ibrahim Isiaka emphasizing the need to boost food production, improve distribution and ensure access to fertilizers and crop diversification. Additionally, the motion appeals to manufacturers, producers, middlemen and sellers to exercise fairness and realism in pricing goods and services, urging them to consider the impact on the consumers. The crisis is potentially fueling instability as uh, witnessed in some parts of the country yesterday, specifically in MENA, Niger State. Strong and swift policy action is needed to mitigate the food crisis, cost of standard living and human suffering. There must be conducive environment created by government for to encourage diaspora remittances and investment by investors from within and outside the country. And that is only possible if we have serious security measures on ground. A lot needs to be done. As a government, we derive our sovereignty from the people, but the same people who gave us that sovereignty are impoverished. They are living in poverty. They are living in penury. The people are sad. The country is not happy. With its economic challenges, residents across the country are voicing growing discontent over the soaring cost of living, which has stained household budgets and eroded purchasing power. From Mina, Niger State to Kano, the most populated state in the country, ordinary Nigerians are protesting in the rising prices on essential goods and services. In this report, our correspondents speak to some residents of Lagos State who are also lamenting the soaring cost of living in the country. The report. The cost of food staples such as rice, gari, beans and cocoa oil has carotted making it increasingly difficult for families to put meals on the table. Inflationary pressures have also driven up the prices of transportation, healthcare and education further exacerbating the financial burdens faced by citizens. A cross-section of residents in a commercial hub of Nigeria Lagos State, who spoke with Trust TV, lamented the challenges of making ends meet in the face of relentless price hikes. 
they noted that the situation is becoming unbearable as they are unable to provide for their families. Um, importation, there was a time they put ban on importation and I heard maybe recently it was lifted but still rice is still like almost 70k now. So they did not change anything. The importation ban and they lifted did not change anything. You are selling and not be, not be down at the seller now. Everything don't go on now for me. Before I sell now and then they sell because everybody saying that money no day, money no day. The situation they lamented has been exacerbated by a combination of factors including insecurity, currency depreciation and physical imbalances. They stress that the Nigerians' heavy reliance on imports for goods such as fuel and food has left the economy vulnerable to external stocks, while persistent inflationary pressures have eroded the value of the Naira, making imported goods more expensive. They urge the federal government to increase the minimum wage as a way of improving the lives of workers and their dependents in the country. Things are getting worse every day. You can't go to the market and buy one thing now. Tomorrow, when you go, it's another thing. Look at rice. Look at, I'm not even talking of foodstuffs. I'm talking of things we sell and get our own gain. There's no gain. Everything is getting worse. We are really suffering. And we need end to this. Although we believe that one day it will be better. We started like this and I, I believe it will not end like this. But they should work on it very fast before it goes to another level. We need to do something. Act very fast. Because people are not happy with the situation of the country. They called for government intervention to stabilize food prices and alleviate the burden on citizens by implementing targeted measures to support vulnerable households. In the western part of the country, where workers and pensioners from New Nigeria newspaper company, along with members of the Northern Governors Forum, staged a peaceful protest on Tuesday to demand the payment of their standing benefits totaling over 2.1 billion naira. Despite directives from the Northern Governors in 2016, these individuals have yet to receive their dues. During the protest, the former workers and their union representatives appealed to the Northern Governors Forum, chaired by Gombe State Governor Inwa Yahya, to intervene in the matter. Trust TV's Bella Musa has more on the report. The former employees stated that within the now defunct newspaper, many of their former colleagues are either sick or bedridden, still awaiting payment of their entitlement years after retirement. It's quite unfortunate to say that um, a great legacy has such uh, things that uh, Sedona left is actually facing a kind of difficult situation. Most especially since after the Northern Governors, has, the, the properties have been handed over to Northern Governors, uh, we have been facing one or two challenges to let to, to, to a time that it has become on stake, that nothing is coming in, nothing is going out. All it is very pathetic. You wonder how this our uh, workers survive. You can see the number. You can see some people have even are uh, of aged. Up till now, their entitlements are not being paid. So you can see the agony. It is very pathetic. Please. Um, I but things are not easy at all. People are suffering. Our staff are suffering. We need them to come to our head. So please come and help us. This is another year now. We have been expecting, expecting. Our people are dying every day. Like last month now, about two people, we lost about two people again. Femi Tindi retired from New Nigerian newspapers over a decade ago. He says he now relies on support from family and friends to cope with his health challenge. I, I fall sick, I guess so, in the, in the office hour. Since the afternoon I travel, they retire me up to the couple, CC, they don't give me. And I can't, I can't walk anywhere again. People have seen me there, I walk. I, I, I used to beg, beg families to register me, to give me my BP medicine. Now my medicine has switched my life. No, we are together. I never see God says so much to me. No, we are not get couple. The workers mentioned that during Kashim Shetima's tenure as governor of Borno State and chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, a five-man committee was established to initiate the sale of new Nigerian newspapers' properties with the intention of compensating the workers. However, 
despite the sale of these properties, the workers have yet to receive their payments. It may also interest you to know that over 102 of our members have died since that time. Why waiting for this benefit? We are praying today that Northern Governors should first and foremost compare the management of New Nigeria and the committee. The management of New Nigeria is led by Mr. Yusuf Musa Kontagura and the com all members of the committee. They should immediately commence payment without delay. Secondly, the management of New Nigeria newspaper and the committee is hereby given an automatum of 14 days only to pay us all our benefits, our entitlement, or will continue to protest and occupy all properties of New Nigeria that they have, been, they have sold in the guise of settling New Nigeria workers. Thank you. Effort to reach New Nigeria newspaper's managing director, Yusuf Musa Kuntugura, via phone, were unsuccessful, and he did not respond to a text message regarding the issue. Bella Musa, Cross TV News Kaduna. You're still watching the news update. Coming up shortly after that, we'll take a look at Makudi residents calling for urgent intervention to address dilapidated infrastructure. The story and more. Do stay with us. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the news update. But a recap of our top stories. We told you earlier that Police neutralized notorious Abuja kidnapper in the fight against insecurity. And Nigerians Grana's House of Representatives interrogates top government officials on the state of the economy. And moving on to more news, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is set to flag off the construction of 3,112 housing units in the Karsana area of the Federal Capital Territory. The groundbreaking exercise scheduled for Thursday is part of a public-private partnership project signed in December 2023 between the Ministry and a consortium of companies comprising Continental Civil and General Construction Limited and Cizali Limited for a total of 100,000 housing units nationwide. And according to a statement by the Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, the first phase of 20,000 housing units will be delivered in the SAT, out of which 3,112 units are to be constructed at the Karsana site. And according to the statement by the Ministry, uh, the housing will be constructed and the groundbreaking exercise will mark the official launch of the Renewed Hope Cities and Estates Programme initiated by the ministry. Commuters in Makadi, the Benue state capital, have called for urgent rehabilitation of the popular old bridge that connects the southern and the northern part of uh, the state. And according to them, the dilapidated bridge has become a death trap, which, if not fixed, will lead to avoided loss of lives and property. Jimmy Azande, report. The popular Makudi Old Bridge was the first to connect the southern and the northern parts of the country to rail and road transportation. Residents say the once beautiful edifice has been abandoned by successful governments in Nigeria. This bridge is terrible. From the north bank axis to the southern part of the bridge, it's just horrible. If you go beneath the bridge, you see that the whole thing has, you know, it has uh, been washed off. So I just wonder how how long it will take before it finally collapses. This side and the other side has several potholes. So we are, we are praying if God could give person that will aid us, not necessarily overhead bridge and whatever, but they should construct this one for us so that it will be easier movement for us. The bridge newly was very fantastic movement. It is only this time that this crossing goes slow and then causes a lot of accident. And we're afraid riding on the bridge, but it's the easier movement to our office. Shortcut is here. And that is what made, uh, we're still moving on. But we're praying if they could construct this for us, it would be easier for us than uh, moving from New Bridge to the other side. Here we move easier to government house. Apart from its deplorable condition, the city bridge has become a breeding ground for criminal activities. This is the first road that links north to the south. 
that has been neglected, government open government. This one has come now with a different uh, approach. So we are happy. Uh, this is supposed to be fixed. We'll be happy if this is fixed uh, to help cartel uh, criminals and uh, your hideout won't be here. And I'm also calling for government to see if there's, there's going to be a mobile base here within this place. Uh, and also as, as of North Bank, mobile base within here. If this is done, it will be very, 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 very good for the people of Benue. The once reliable shortcut has now become a terabyte day for residents who live by the river banks and travelers. Having a, a challenge of, as in those hoodlums, those criminals around, at times they will come and steal someone's handset. On that process, they will even kill yourself. So we need a government, if they can construct that street lights, I think it will, be even very, it will be even very easier for us and to even help the community as well. Some people, they are afraid to follow this road because there is no security, number one. Then number two, there is no development. Then number three, the road was condemned. We need for help. Like the Kasnala and Makuri new bridges, the old bridge calls for urgent rehabilitation and security for optimum utilization. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. And in business, the value of foreign exchange transactions on the official Nigeria Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market surged to $584 million, up from $440 million previously. And this increase accompanied a depreciation of the national currency against the U.S. dollar closing at 1,433 Naira per dollar compared to 1,419 Naira per dollar the day before. Improved liquidity follows the Central Bank of Nigeria's effort to stabilize the foreign exchange rate. And besides commercial banks, the CBN, oil firms and multinational also participate in dollar sales. A recent CBN circulars aim to boost liquidity and narrow the gap between parallel and official rates, including directives from banks to adjust their ex of the forest rather exposures to mitigate a risk. And on the international scene, Hamas says it has given its response to a framework proposal for a new ceasefire in Gaza. The details of the deal set out by the Israeli uh, Stakeholders and the U.S., Qatar and Egypt have not been released. It was earlier reported to include a six-week truce when more Israeli hostages will be exchanged for Palestinian prisoners. Israel and the U.S. have both said they are reviewing Hamas's response. A U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, who is currently in the Middle East, said he would discuss Hamas's response with officials in Israel on Wednesday. Uh, while Blinken was given no indication of how the U.S. views the response, President Joe Biden described it as a little over the top, suggesting the Israeli leadership would not easily agree to what Hamas is asking. An official of Hamas says the group had asked for changes relating to the treatment of those injured, including their return home and transfer to hospitals abroad. The proposal was sent to Hamas a week ago, but a representative told the Reuters News agency that it had taken them until Tuesday to respond because parts of it were unclear and ambiguous. Qatari Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani has described Hamas's response as positive in general. A Russian missile strikes a hit Kiev and other cities on Wednesday morning, causing at least three deaths and 11 injuries. President Volodymyr Zelensky said two people were killed in Kyiv and 10 others were wounded. A man was also killed in the southern city of Mykolaiv and the whole country was put under air alert and attacks were reported as far as west as Lviv near the Polish border. Nigeria on Tuesday won two more medals at the ongoing Africa Senior Weightlifting Championship in Egypt as Edid Young, Umofia, claimed two silver medals. Competing in the 73 kg men's category, the 2022 Commonwealth bronze medalist claimed two in snatch and a total. He lifted 144 kg in snatch and 170 kg in clean and jerk, with a total of 314. The two silver medals have taken Nigeria's medal hall 
at the championship to eight. And lastly, in sports now, uh, we take a look at that, but we'll bring you that on our subsequent bulletin. Now we have come to the end of the news at this hour. For more, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching.